Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good sleep? <laughs> well, again, uh, thank you so much for having me. It's just such an honor, such a privilege for me to be able to uh, serve you the last couple of days uh, at Inspire uh, Conference and also in your weekend services. I just want to express my gratitude to uh, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Paul, and all the leadership team here at City Life for having me. Uh, you've been good to me the last couple of days, and uh, I hope you uh, receive some of the word that I share. If this is the very first time that you uh, see me, well, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be blessed with uh, the simple message that I'm going to share to you today or this morning. But first of all, I want to share with you a picture of my family, my true riches. This is, should be up by now or not? Yeah, that's my family. I have three children, Kevin, the tallest and the eldest. He's 25 years old, and he was graduated from uh, Monash University, uh, Melbourne, uh, October 2020. And uh, he is actually living here in Melbourne at this moment, uh, working. And my only daughter, Cheryl, just graduated from uh, Melbourne University, uh, master's degree, uh, in fact, I'm going to be here again uh, next month to attend her graduation. So, yeah, <laughs> praise the Lord. And as we still have little Max, 15 years old, uh, at home. And when I was having conversation with Max, Max, where do you want to go for university? And without thinking, he said, I'm going to Melbourne, Daddy. <laughs> so pray for me, because all of them love Melbourne. I don't know what you guys are doing in Melbourne, but they love Melbourne, and two of my children are falling in love with your coffee. <laughs> and whenever I come to Melbourne, they took me to all the coffee places in the small alleys and the big restaurants and all of that. It seems like never-ending coffee place. <laughs> anyway, I want to share with you a very simple thought today. Something that I learned during COVID, during the pandemic. During the lockdown especially, and I've heard from my friends and also from my uh, eldest, Kevin, that You've been locked down for the longest time here in Melbourne. And we also separated from him for about two years. Couldn't see each other uh, for two years. I've seen that husbands didn't know what to do with their wives being at home all the time. I've seen parents didn't know what to do with uh, their children having them at home all the time doing online school. Pandemic has revealed to us that there are more important things in life that we had not paid attention before. And many things that we thought were important turn out to be less important and can be left out. Many have come to realize the importance of building relationship with their loved ones at home. Because in all this while, they have been so busy with their work, with their businesses, with their careers, that they neglected the most important thing, which is family. Are you agree with me? As, as Christians, we've been told to live life from the inside out. Guard your heart with all diligence, the Bible says. Because out of it springs the issues of life. So we've been told to live life from the inside out. 
And if we believe this statement, then home is actually where we start. Because home is the inside. And everything else, like work, business, career, even ministries, are the outside. And yet, sadly, once the pandemic is over, when things start getting back to normal again, many tend to forget what's most important in life. You know that crisis never come to bring us down, but to move us to the next level. Crisis is actually a turning point f- for the better. If we know how to respond to crisis. When you press an orange and squeeze it hard, what come out, the juice, is more expensive than the orange itself. Right? I've checked. <laughs> Even in Melbourne. So when life presses and squeezes you hard, it's supposed to bring the best out of you and make you more valuable. During COVID, when we were locked down, we were forced to stay at home and couldn't get together with our friends. And we couldn't have church on Sunday or any other meetings. And many of us were alone, including my eldest son. When someone was exposed to COVID, they had to be isolated independently. Remember that? They needed to be separated from family, from friends. They needed to be quarantined. And as a result, they were no longer able to rely on the supports of others. During lockdown, many people had to fight their battle alone. I have found out that many Christians could not anticipate this situation. They were discouraged. Their faith quickly fade away. Many of them experienced mental health problems. And they were anxious, afraid, scared, worried about what might happen to them. And this became a pastoral issue for many churches around the world. Because most of them were not ready were not trained to fight alone. Many Christians didn't have what I call personal faith. A personal experience in walking with God alone. All this while, they were always surrounded by their loved ones, their friends, their connect groups that cares so much for them. So much so that they forgot to develop their own personal relationship with God. Their faith was not personal. Their faith was more of a group faith, for, of a communal faith, or what I call a crowd faith. Their faith was only strong when they, when they were in a crowd, when they were in, in a congregation like this, when they were get together with all their friends, their connect group, they were used to worship in the crowd. They are not used to worship God alone. They can only connect with God when, when they are in the crowd. And that's why during the lockdown, when they were alone, their faith was quickly weakened. Do you know that in life, there are times when it is not you who choose the problem, but the problem chooses you and only you. And when that happens, you need to fight your battle alone. When the problem chooses you, often you cannot rely on others. You cannot rely on your friends or your leader anymore. You cannot ask 
the people around you to fight for you or to fight with you. It is not that they don't want to help you, but the problem, the challenge was, is so personal that they cannot relate to it. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Jesus said one day to Simon, 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 Satan has asked for you. Not for the others, only for you. That he may sift you as we. When Jesus was in Gethsemane, he said to his disciple, my soul is, is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Then he prayed. And when he came back to his disciple, he found them sleeping. Thank you very much. And he said, could you not watch with me an hour? You see, it wasn't that his disciples didn't want to support him. They tried, but they just couldn't relate. And they didn't understand what Jesus was dealing with. And Jesus had to fight his battle alone. What about Mary? His mother. When she was pregnant with Jesus, she had to struggle alone. Because no one before her and no one since has, has ever conceived by the Holy Spirit. She was still a virgin when she got pregnant. And who can relate to her? Of course, people would notice and ask her about the pregnancy. Are you pregnant, Mary? How beautiful, how wonderful. Who's the dad? Is Joseph? No. The Holy Spirit did, it, did this to me. What? Who's the Holy Spirit? Are you okay, Mary? Are you sure? It was the Holy Spirit? Who would believe her story? It just doesn't make sense. And can you imagine how difficult to be Mary at that time? Remember, she was fulfilling God's plan. The angel of the Lord came to her and told her the story that she would be pregnant with the Holy Spirit. So he sees she was fulfilling God's plan, yet the plan come with personal challenges. You see, Mary had to face her battle alone because no one could relate to her story. Absolutely no one. Not even his, her fiancé, Joseph. Joseph couldn't believe in her story and wanted to divorce her. And also because of his association with Mary, Joseph had to suffer the consequences too. Who would believe in his story when he told others, it wasn't me, it wasn't me who got her pregnant. It was the work of the Holy Spirit. Who would believe in his story? Who would believe that it's the work of the Holy Spirit? No one could relate to his story. And Joseph too had to fight his battle alone. You see, sometimes you have to fight your battle alone. And to do that, you need to have a personal faith. Amen? To fight your battle alone. And today I want, I want to learn. I want you to learn from a classic story about David and Goliath. And I don't think I need to read all the verses in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Because most of you should be familiar with this story. I just want to point out a few things. What makes this story interesting to me is that 
there had been change, a change of strategy. There had been a change of tactic by the Philistines. Instead of fighting with their entire army, now they wanted one-on-one -on -one combat. And the new strategy could not be anticipated by Saul and his army. Very unusual. Considering that Saul and his army were very formidable army. They had enough experiences in war and always victorious. For 40 days, the Bible says, every morning and every evening, Goliath came forward. And every time, Saul and his army, when they heard Goliath's voice, they become terrified. And deeply shaken. I can imagine how confused David was when he came to the to the Israeli army, the army that he was, was so proud of because three of his older brother were part of Saul's army. But then David has to has to witness how they scattered, running scared when Goliath appeared to challenge them. Maybe David was thinking, what happened here? Why has it turned, to be, turned out to be like this? Saul and his, and his army, their eyes were fixed on Goliath. The biggest problem they had encountered so far. And the more they saw Goliath, the bigger Goliath became in their eyes. To the point that they forgot their own identity. They forgot their track record, that they never been beaten before. And they forgot the hand of God that has been with them all this time. They felt small, they felt powerless and hopeless. The enemy's new strategy seems to be working. But David, his eyes were on the living God, which allowed David to see Goliath no bigger than he really was. To cut the long story short, even though David was doubted by his own king, by Saul, he didn't give up. David saw that Saul and his army didn't have courage to fight Goliath because they have already lost heart. Losing heart makes the Israeli army to be defeated before they even try. Causes them to have no courage. If you lose heart, you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, you cannot see hope. For it is faith that gives you hope. And that is exactly what the enemy wants for them to lose heart. On the other hand, David, his faith was still intact. He didn't lose heart. He was so convinced that God was with him. So much so that the king Saul's word could not prevent him from going to fight Goliath. And that is what I call a true faith. It doesn't matter if you have to walk alone. If you have no one to support you. You still go. That's a true faith. David's faith comes from his trust in the living God. Do you know that all relationships are based on trust? Including our relationship with God. Trusting someone is having confidence in the character, ability, strength, and truth of, a, of the person. A person cannot have a healthy relationship with someone they cannot trust. Trust is extended to the level of truth. The more truth is spoken in the relationship, the more is the trust. Amen? 
Trust created a sense of security and peace. And the greater the trust, the greater the peace. But when trust is broken because of lack of truth, then the relationship is also broken. Now, David trusts in the living God. Now, this is my question to you because you've been listening so well. Was David too naive in offering himself to fight Goliath? Was he too naive? He never had any war experience before. Was he reckless? Did he have no calculation at all? Did he have blind faith? Well, let's find out. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 37. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David says, the Lord, the Lord, who deliver me from the power of the lion and from the power of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, because King Saul couldn't stop him anymore. He said, well, in this case, go. God bless you. <laughs> you are on your own. God bless you. So have, having read this, having read this, come back to our questions. Was David too naive? Was he reckless? Did he have no calculation? Of course not. David was full of calculation. He was a naive. His faith, his trust was based on his experiences and his knowledge of who God is. Twice, David mentioned about the living God. David knew that God is alive and God is with him. David didn't rely on his own strength, but his experiences in walking with God became the basis of his decision. Faith is a recent trust. And this is the most important. David was used to fighting alone. He used to fight one-on-one -on -one against a lion or bear that came to steal his sheep. And remember, that lion or bear was way bigger and stronger than David. And that's why in his eyes, in David's eyes, Goliath was no different than lion and bear. No, imagine this. Imagine this. Every time David has to face a lion or a bear that came to steal his sheep, he had absolutely no one to support him. He couldn't ask help from anyone. Not from his dad, not from his older brother who's in the army. He, has, he had absolutely no one to support him except from God alone. And God was the only one he could count on. And every time God delivered him from the power of the lion and the power of the bear. Actually, when I was reading and meditate upon this story, I noticed that actually 
every time David faced a lion or a bear, he had a choice. He had a choice, right? To run away and leave the flock alone. And I believe if he did that, his father Jesse wouldn't mind if he had told him, look dad, I ran away when the flock were, were attacked by a lion or by the bear. There was nothing that I can do. Right? He had options. And I believe that his dad would, would have totally understood his situation and been very happy to see David alive. Thank God you are still alive. But David chose to defend his sheep because he had trust in the living God and used the situation to gain personal experience with the living God. So even though David was young and never went to a war, he already had personal, authentic experiences in walking with God alone. And this is what distinguishes David from Saul. Saul has always fought in groups. Saul only had confidence when he was in the, with his group, with his army. But when the enemy changed their tactic, their strategy, Saul could not anticipate. Just like many Christians today who only have faith when they are with their groups with their crowd, with their cell groups people, but they don't have personal experience with the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Yes, on many occasions, crowd faith could bring you victory. Remember when in Mark chapter 2, four men, the Bible says, bringing a paralytic to Jesus. Remember that story? And when they could not come near him, they had to uncover the roof and let down the bed of the paralytic in front of Jesus. The Bible says clearly, when Jesus saw their faith, not the faith of the paralytic, but the faith of their friends. When Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the four men, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Then he said, Arise and take up your bed. It is good to have friends like that, right? It is good to have friends like that. But sometimes the enemy changes their strategy. and demand one-on-one -on -one battle. In that case, we better be ready. But if we have personal, authentic experience with Jesus, if we have personal faith, we will not lose heart. We will fight our battle and be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I invite the praise and worship team to come up? What do I want to communicate with you today? There will be times when it is not you who choose the problem, but the problem chooses you and only you. There will be time when you have to face your problem alone when you cannot rely on others, you cannot rely on your leaders, you cannot rely on your pastor. Or maybe today, there are people in this service who have problems so personal that you cannot relate to your situation and you have to fight your battle alone. I want you to know that this is actually your opportunity to experience miracle from God. 
I was blessed by the personal testimony that we just witnessed before the preaching from the lady who suffered from cancer and the cancer was gone. It is actually an opportunity for you to develop your personal faith with God. I can testify to you, I will not be where I am today if I have not developed personal faith with God in all these years. There is no way that I can, I can be the leader of thousands of people. For the last 25 years, there are times that I have to fight my battles alone. It's not that I don't want to share to to my friends. In fact, I did share some of the personal challenges that I face. But at the same time, I need to manage my expectation so that I would not be disappointed with them. Because they couldn't relate to my problems. They've tried to understand, but it is so personal that I need to face it by myself. Jesus is alive. Amen. And you can depend on Him. He is much greater than whatever problems that you are facing. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Fix your eyes on Him alone. Remember, Christ has never come to break you. He's only come to take you to the next level in life. And if you pray for a breakthrough, if you pray for a miracle, Christ is actually the best way for you to experience the living God. That when the crisis is over and when you look back, you will see that it was worth it. That God was there all along, helping you every step of the way. And little that you know, your faith has grown bigger, stronger. And if you have to, if you have to face another personal challenges again, you know that you will not lose heart. Because the same God that has helped you before will show up again for you and help you to win this battle. I pray that this simple message will encourage you and strengthen you today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dan, we're just going to sing over this moment as we, as we step into this together as a church. tried by fire and purified you take whatever you desire Lord is my life I want to be tried by fire purified you take whatever you desire Lord is my life I wanna be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, He is my life. I wanna be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. I want to 
I wanna be consumed. 